Hi everyone. Today what I'd like to do is show you a little bit about what I think is the correct way to use the animation tree node in Godot. Now I won't say that it's always wrong in every single tutorial that's out there already, but it's always wrong in every single tutorial that's out there already. And the reason for that is basically they only ever use travel mode. Travel mode is fine for certain things like fire and forget things, like for example when you want to swing, that's completely fine, uh, or like shoot a weapon and it just needs to come back to the base state. But if you have a state that stays constant or you want to go along states in a linear fashion, you don't want to use travel. Travel is actually, it doesn't give you any information, it doesn't really help you at all. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to use the animation tree correctly for the vast majority of scenarios. As you can see here, I've got my little French dude. He's got a baguette that he swings at people because that's what people do. If you see, I've got my idle state. And as usual, uh, any normal person who's standing perfectly still is actually bobbing up and down for some reason. Come to jump, it's just one frame where it looks like he's about to swing the baguette at someone's face. And swinging. Which just makes a very fast baguette. Now, in the animation tree, as you can see, I've got all my states defined here. I've got idle, jump, and swing. For the connections, this one this is important. This is where the uh, the change here that I am doing is very important. I've set this advanced condition to is jumping. And you have to remember this because this is a thing that's going to stay true for a long time while the character's in the air. Instead of, well, we have to travel to it while the character's in the air and all this, that, and the other thing. And then we just have this with the advanced condition is is idle. So that will time it. It'll stay in this state while is jumping is true, and then it'll go back automatically when is idle becomes true. Um, for swinging, we don't have that. And the reason we don't have an advanced condition on that is that it's fire and forget. You don't want to have to time it, so you don't want to have to say, oh, my swing takes this long, let me wait until it's done, and then switch the property. No, we can just use an auto advance on the other one switching mode at end and that will work perfectly for us. So to these are two different types. We're going to do travel for swing, but we're going to use the what I call the correct version for jump. I would also do this for running because uh, running is a thing that you don't know when they're going to let up, so you don't want to be calling travel constantly to the, the run state or anything like that. So let's go take a look at what it actually looks like in the code. Alright, so the first thing I do here, I find some constants and I find some motion, simple little normal stuff. I grab the animation tree out and then from the animation tree I get the state machine. And now what I've done is I've set, I've made properties with names equal to the properties that I defined here for my advanced conditions. If you look is jumping and is idle. Is idle, is jumping. Same things. And I define setters and getters for both of them. That's important to do. So what the setters and getters look like, it's going to be a little cramped down here. Um, and the reason for that is I wanted to save a little bit of space. But essentially, if you go to the animation tree and notice these values pop up here under conditions whenever you add a new one um, you can see what the path is to get them parameters conditions is idle and notice this isn't on the animation state machine in other words the playback node this is on the actual tree so when you set that on the actual tree you get different effects in this case what we need to do is the set and the get we need to do both of these we want to do set parameters conditions is idle because that's what this says value so that's the value passed in get is idle is just doing get with the exact same path but no parameter and the exact same thing is true of 
is jumping. This is, you know, pretty easy. It's boilerplate, so it's pretty annoying to do up front, but for things that you don't control the timing over, like jumping or, you know, moving left and right when a character stops moving, when they start moving, uh, this can also be done for long running things like stuff that you might want to, I don't know, tween while the character is moving or something along those lines. Doing it this way is going to be much cleaner. And notice we're not even setting these values directly. It's because we're always going to use these with self, just for simplicity's sake. All right, let's look at our physics process. It's very simple too. Just normal stuff. I don't have left and right movement because I didn't need it. So the input vector is zero. I just say has jumped is false. If they hit it, then has jumped is true. That's to do some checks later. And it says is jumping equals true is idle equals false and it sets the jump strength for the input vector dot y value now as you can see this is normal from what all the other tutorials say input dot is action pressed ui swing state machine travel swing so this is a fire and forget so we don't have to worry about that one we don't have to set some value when it comes back but notice for is jumping we do we have to say if it's on the floor then jumping is no longer true and is idle is true. Um, you might want to make that a left to right, but I think setting to is idle first and then checking again in the next frame if right or left is being pressed is perfectly fine. And that's the whole reason I have the has jumped. Um, I could be using, you know, my input vector dot y is not equal to zero, whatever. Um, in this case, I thought it was easier for demonstration purposes. Okay, and finally, we do motion plus equals input vector plus vector two dot down times gravity times delta remember whenever you're adding gravity or applying acceleration you want to multiply by delta even though we're putting it into move and slide the important thing here is having vector two dot up in your move and slide so that is on floor will return true when the character is actually touching the ground okay and that's about that let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks and note i have to set active back on so that it actually uses the animation tree when functioning. So here's our swing. That was our just travel. And notice if I go and change the value oops, in code here, I say this is like negative, I don't know, I'll just pick a number, 350. Save this, come back to it. Notice I go a lot higher but I stay in jump form that entire time and it's not calling travel over and over. It's just constantly there because the property is true. Okay, and I think that's about it. This is just a simple little tutorial to show you what I think is the correct way to use the animation tree. Um, fire and forget with travel is fine, but in general, I've found far more use out of using advanced conditions. These can be combined. The only thing that you really have to remember is if you're going to use both the setters and the getters in your code so if you want to do a test to say if is jumping you have to do if self dot is jumping so that Godot thinks you're calling it from outside but otherwise uh, yeah this just kind of works and it works extremely well Okay, thank you very much, and have a good day.